I sat across from Mark Zuckerberg as he demonstrated moving things around on a screen wearing a motor neuron sensing wristband that he was doing micro gestures with. Here's what I'm seeing while I'm using this. Just the gentlest flick of my thumb to check my messages. And with another quick movement, I can answer while I'm on the move. Uh, or I can even take a photo. Is this the future of the metaverse? Well, it's one of several things that Meta is counting on, and I got to look at these technologies firsthand at their reality research lab, stuff that you won't get a chance to see for years. At Meta's Reality Research Lab, I got to look at the Quest Pro, which is Meta's next VR headset. For more on that, watch the whole second video that I have. But in this video, I'm gonna also talk about all of the future tech demos that I got to try. I've been curious, just like many people, about where Meta's going to go with the metaverse. Beyond VR, to AR, to what else? How is this going to take over some of the stuff that we do in our everyday lives? So when the company invited me to come out to their reality research labs, I was super excited. Also because this is the first time the company has invited journalists out to that facility. I had to shoot my own photo and video when I was there, except for a few parts where I wasn't allowed to shoot, in which places Meta shot footage and photos using their own equipment on site. Meta is based down in Silicon Valley, but its future tech team, the Reality Research Labs, is up in Washington State, kind of near Microsoft. And when I arrived at this lab facility, it was a bunch of nondescript office buildings in an office park near DigiPen. I was super curious what was inside. Michael Abrash, who's the chief scientist of Reality Research Labs and has always been Meta's far future futurist, was the one who guided us through a lot of these demos. So what I saw was kind of a tasting of four different demos that were meant to represent present technologies that Meta is not able to make happen yet for everyday people, but is trying to shoot for to advance different zones. One of them was neural inputs, and it's kind of the wildest one. It's one that Meta has talked about before, and Meta acquired this company called Control Labs in 2019. These conversations and demos from their reports have shown people using this band to, uh, to control things with micro gestures. And we got to see some people using it just a few feet away from us. I didn't get a chance to demo it myself, unfortunately, but I got to see both Mark Zuckerberg and a couple of people who were trained over a period of time to use it. The way this works is it senses individual motor neurons that are firing and can kind of sense a muscle movement in a way that you don't necessarily even have to fully move your fingers, according to Meta. These are the zero ones, binary events that your brain is communicating down to your muscles. And what Diego has learned how to do is to voluntarily control them. So some of the stuff could look like gestures, but over time, apparently, this will start feeling almost microscopic invisible movements that will then control things. Kind of looking like mind reading, but it's actually intent to move your hand. The demos that I saw, first Mark Zuckerberg had shown us a whole bunch of little things moving icons around, and it looked like he was kind of moving his thumb uh, like a mouse and tapping. Uh, Meta has shown some of these demos before. It looks almost like, a, like a, the way you'd use a mouse or some sort of a futuristic control device, but with no actual device. Apparently, it's not precise enough yet or fast enough yet for typing, but it's meant to eventually be used for things like smart glasses. That's where Meta is looking at this technology the most because the idea is that you would not be carrying a controller around. You'd want to be able to interact really quickly. But right now, it's all about trying to prove that it just works and how easy it could be to use it. The other demo I saw with it were, were people sitting down playing this um, this game that was like, uh, you know, you move back and forth and try to uh, survive this this endless running game. And usually it would involve some, some hand motions. But after a while, they kept their hands still and did these micro gestures that they couldn't even tell were happening. And they claimed that this was a technique called co-adaptation or co-adaptive learning. And the feedback that you get from moving it can eventually be whittled down to something so small that the AI picks that up and you can start making motions that feel really, really tiny. This is all pretty wild and hard to imagine in everyday use, but there are a lot of possibilities, not just for general control, but possibly for assistive uses. People who may not have full use of their limbs or have other motor complications, because this technology is not that different 
from the types of tech that could be used, say, to create a prosthetic limb. So you could potentially use it to operate something even if you didn't have full use of your hand. The second demo that I did get to try involves spatial audio. Now, spatial audio has been around in AirPods and VR, and it's basically 3D audio that you can hear around you. It can be interesting, it can feel gimmicky. Uh, in VR, it can be really useful to try to locate where things are. Where Meta is trying to go with spatial audio, though, is to AR to eventually be able to place 3D audio in a real room and make it feel like it's there. And the company has been working on technology to not just measure where your uh, audio is coming from in the room, but where the echoes are coming from in the space of a room. They took us to an anechoic chamber, which was soundproof and showed us this array of uh, dozens of speakers that was designed to create the soundscape that microphones would be used to measure the echoing in a room and also be able to tune to specific ears. So what I got to listen to were these two demos after that, put microphones inside my ears, and then I wore these over-ear headphones. Somebody in the room walked around me and recorded this, you know, 40 second uh, clip of them making various noises and things like that. And then I listened to it again, played back. The audio, even having listened to immersive 3D audio things, it was surprisingly convincing at times. I kept my eyes closed both times and it really felt like somebody was moving around to the side and whispering near me and that I thought there was someone behind me. So it recreates that soundscape, but I had to stay perfectly still. The other demo that I tried was in a room with four speakers and I wore these uh, headphones with this um, tracking device to allow me to track the audio as I moved and they played back audio, both on the speakers and on the headphones to see if I could tell the difference, whether it was being projected or real. Your sound coming from the first loudspeaker. Okay, good. I failed the first test because they played identified on the speakers and then I realized midway through, are they tricking me? I took off the headphones, it was all playing on the headphones. It was pretty shocking. There were over ear headphones that kind of floated a few centimeters over my ears. This tech is something that they're creating specifically for this space. So why is that any different than anything else? I think again, it's that if you could create audio that feels convincing enough that it's in the room with you, then eventually if you have uh, holographic avatars, you know, like the Marvel type things that would appear and beam down and talk to you, it could actually sound like they're in the room with you versus just being in your earbud. And based on these couple of demos, this spatial audio was a lot better than anything that I've ever heard before. But it won't be here necessarily anytime soon. The other demo I tried involved 3D scanning. This is the sort of stuff that I've looked at on iPads and iPhones with LiDAR. And 3D scanning is already a big trend all across the landscape for VR and AR. What's new here is Meta sort of showed some of the ways that phone-based 3D scanning could improve. They used my shoe for one of the scans. So they took, took my sneaker off and scanned it. So I, I got a good familiar look of my own shoe in AR. That first scan, which took a few minutes to make, it was good. It looked like a better scan than I've seen most times doing it by myself using LiDAR. I could still see some flaws with it though. The second demo that they showed with 3D scanning was a lot more interesting, looking at something called radiance fields. They used a technology where they could look at the light patterns around an object and kind of create this 3D scan that would be a lot more detailed, but to do it realistically. I mean, what I'm basically saying is they showed some 3D objects that they scanned into VR that were very complicated, a very fuzzy teddy bear and a very spiky cactus with tons of little spikes. And I thought, okay, how good is this gonna be? When I looked at it in VR, I could see all the little curly cues of the hair and the spikes of the cactus, which were really fine. And when I brought it over to a lamp, I could see light being reflected off of it, a virtual lamp. These objects looked really good and crafted, but they were 3D scans. You know, when you throw it in the air uh, against a wall or if you bounce it off the ground, it's gonna respond the same way that the physical object would. Now, if that's how good they eventually could make 3D scanning into VR, that could be huge because the whole dream of scanning in your furniture, your clothing, or, or other people, um, right now, a lot of that stuff looks kind of melted and weird, but could it eventually look good enough to not feel like it was glued into the scene? I feel like some of those later demos that I saw showed a lot of possibility, but those take hours to process right now and aren't ready yet. And the final demo I looked at involved avatars. 
We've seen them all the time in VR, and they're cartoony. And Meta has been promising these photorealistic avatars that will start looking like we're really talking with somebody. Codec avatars are what Meta calls them, and I've never seen a demo of them before until now. I got to look at three different types of avatar demos. One of them was a more boiled down 3D scan avatar that is meant to be done using a phone, something that you eventually could maybe scan yourself and pop yourself in. She scans her face from different angles with a neutral expression for about 30 seconds, then spends another minute and a half making a variety of expressions. That's really all there is to it. Hi guys, my 3D avatar is ready for use in my phone or VR. It just took a few hours to generate after my scan and the team's working on making that processing a whole lot faster. The conversation I had with somebody remotely looked not bad, although kind of like an animated bust. You know, I felt like they were talking to me, but, but a little bit still. And so if I had a conversation with somebody like that, I would say, why aren't you moving very much? What's going on here? It was a little uncanny. The second demo I had uh, was really surprising. And that was um, Codec Avatar 2, which is their next generation kind of moonshot avatar that they're, that they're building, where I talked to somebody in Pittsburgh who's, who's building this. And I got to see basically their head almost lit in candlelight. So what you're seeing actually is a relatable volumetric representation of my head, my face, my hair, my shoulders, and neck. And to enable this interaction, there are a few cameras mounted on the headset that I'm wearing. They're observing my eyes and my mouth and allow me to animate the avatar in various ways. And I felt like I was talking to them in some weird dark room. It almost felt like a PlayStation 5 video game or Xbox video game where, you know, you look at it and it looks so incredibly rendered that you wonder if it's photo real, but it's actually that person talking. And so I kept thinking like, is this animated? Am I looking at the actual person? I got really close to them. I think I was close talking and, but I felt like I was was intimate, like I felt like I was really talking to them. And they I wanted to see what the expressions were like and the smiles. I asked them to kind of make different faces. It was pretty good. I don't know when that's ever gonna become available, but if I saw that in a game or in an app, I'd be really curious to try it. The third avatar demo I saw was looking at uh, how Meta is gonna try to actually add legs to avatars along with clothing. It was a, a scan of an actor in this room studded with cameras to create just a quick captured clip of that avatar that I could then walk around. Also the clothing that was being draped on that, on that person was all virtual. That looked as good as the avatar. You know, a lot of, um, you know, the shirts kind of rippling and moving and nothing felt kind of glued on. And a lot of the metaverse has been talking a big game about commerce and, and fashion. And a lot of companies going into the space trying to make things for people. Is that meta trying to flex out to show some of those possibilities? I think so. The tour wrapped up with Michael Abrash talking about this big future of where we're going in the metaverse, where he feels that this is a real phase change for people. Maybe the biggest shift since uh, personal computing and the internet. Well, I think what it feels like is that a lot of things we know are starting to evolve to a next level. Where Meta wants it to go to is stuff that bridges VR and AR and avatars and 3D objects. And Meta's not the only company trying to get to this point. Uh, Apple has been going there, Google's been talking about it, Microsoft's been talking about it, NVIDIA's been talking about it. You've got Snap, pretty much every player in the tech landscape has been exploring it, which makes it feel like it could actually start to happen because a lot of companies are, are willing it to happen. I got to see all of Meta's prototype VR and AR headsets on a wall at their reality research labs. Some of them were looking at things like adding mixed reality. Some of them were adding virtual eyes to the outside of your headset. Some were trying to be slimmer. I saw one that was shooting for the, the way in which VR glasses could eventually be small enough to almost feel like sunglasses. And this is our North Star in a sense, you know? Can we make this faultlessly realistic, comfortable to wear all day and, and open up this productivity vision? And when I look at that wall, I get the sense of how much change is still happening in this landscape. I got the sense looking at Meta's research lab that there's still a lot of work left to be done, but it was fascinating to get a taste of where things are going, even if some of that stuff is going to take five years or more to get there. Thanks a lot for watching, and if you have any more uh, questions, feel free to fire away. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll talk to you soon.